What's up my friends? Welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff and this is going to be a little bit of a ranty but still hopefully entertaining video about how I would like to see lens manufacturers adopt T-stops either in the place of or as well as f-stops in their marketing of their lenses. I'll explain the differences between f and t-stops and then I'll make my case for prioritizing t-stops. By all means, change my mind in the comment section below. So I now have a Patreon for this channel, the idea being that any funds from Patreon, I buy gear, do a completely unbiased review, and then I give away the gear to backers. It's really inexpensive to be a backer, just the cost of a cup of coffee, and it allows me to do gear giveaways whilst improving my content. In fact, so far, it hasn't actually been running very long, but I've given away stuff to the value of hundreds. Check it out. So everyone watching I'm sure will know what a lens's f-stop means. It's a physical measurement, the lens's focal length divided by its aperture. It's very relatable, people understand it. People know that f2.8 is nice for a zoom lens, they understand that f1.4 is what you'd get on say a flagship prime lens, an f4 lens might be a little bit more affordable but then still really usable. Camera guys can relate to this. T-stops, on the other hand, are a measurement of light transmission, the amount of light that makes it through the lens. Cinema lenses always use T-stops because you can switch between prime lenses and you maintain exactly the same exposure level. I love using T-stops because they transcend brands and focal lengths, and they really reveal the true brightness of a lens, plus the optical quality to a certain extent, and shortcomings of a lens. So at this point you might be thinking, using f-stops works, why change things? And I say, is it so wrong to want to be better and for things to be more transparent? I say f-stops can be quite misleading. You can buy, for example, two different f4 lenses from two different manufacturers and the light transmission level, the t-stop, can be really different. For example, the Sony FE 24-105 f4G has a T-stop of T4.4, not too bad. Whereas the Sigma 24-105 F4 DG has notably better T-stop value of T4.2. Interestingly, the original Canon 24-105 F4 lens has an abysmal T-stop of T5.1. Think about that. For years and years, people were going out and buying that lens and expecting it to have the same performance as other F4 lenses, and they weren't getting the money's worth by a long shot. It's alright though, the newer version, the Mark II, has a much improved t-stop of t4.4. Much better. One reason for a worse t-stop reading can be vignette, and that's just because when light transmission is measured, it's measured across the entire frame, it's the total light that comes through, and so vignette can really put a dent in that figure. I'll just say this doesn't bother me so much as a videographer, but I know some guys that vignette drives them up the wall. F-stops also don't account for light lost from traveling through glass elements. You could have the very best glass in the world and still some light particles or photons wouldn't make it through. And also bear in mind there's some light lost from hitting the inside of the barrel of the lens. So really with F-stops there's some uncertainty and some guesswork. And with T-stops there's no ambiguity. You don't need to go and check the XO mark to see whether they've tested your lens for light transmission you already know it. My hope is that by switching to t-stops or going with both on the barrel of the lens, it instantly gives you more information about the quality of the optics in your lens, plus it allows you to compare much easier to other brands. I would actually love it if they would state the t-stop and f-stop on the barrel of the lens. They're busy already, I know there's lots of figures on there already, but I just think it would be super handy. However, lens manufacturers, I'm sure, don't want us comparing t-stops of their photography lenses with that of other brands, and that's why they'll never go for this. The other problem to this is that photography guys understand f-stops, and they're not necessarily thinking about t-stops when they buy lenses, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if the feedback from this video is very much if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of approach. But I say, sure, it ain't broke, but could it be better? I think so. Anyway, that's all the rambling I've got for you today. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful and, you know, got, got you thinking. I want to hear from you. Have you had any experience with any lens brand in particular that's been especially bad when it comes to the f-stop versus the light transmission? Any that have been horrendously unacceptable for things like vignette? 
Also, do you go online and check a lens's T-stop before buying it? I wanna know in the comment section below. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about videography and audio on this channel, of which YouTubers picked this video for you and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Leave it to you to give me another choice While the buildings crumble, humble the mind by the way you embrace And when I find you sinking out of sight